Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the Paradigm AI Smoke Woods and Irons from Callaway. Well, what a life-changing three and a half months it has been for Matthew Pavon after winning the Spanish Open on the DP World Tour in October, managed to secure his PGA Tour card this season and breaks through at the Farmers Insurance Open, the first Frenchman in 100 years. Let's hear from the champion. I still can't believe it. Um, as I said, it feels like there is another round to play tomorrow <laughs> because we're only Saturday. Uh, that is special. Um, I can thank the, the PJ Tour enough, um, give us the opportunity to come from Europe and compete here in America against the best player of the world it has always been the dream for me. And I got uh, finally a shot and I, and I took it. I mean, it's, um, it's a dream come true and it's, uh, it's a little bit hard to believe for now. Just before we take some questions, can we just get a feeling of your sense just coming down the stretch, um, maybe particularly the, the last tee, having a one-stroke lead, standing on that tee, it's a pretty daunting tee shot. Just um, talk us through that last hole. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that, that was tough for me to, uh, to give a point on, uh, on 17. Um, it is how it is. Um, sometimes you make some, sometimes you miss some. Um, and then I just saw Nikolai striping down the, the drive 300 plus yards in the middle and I was like, okay, it's going to be spicy now. Um, I might have to do a birdie or something special. And um, I just, my ball didn't fade from the tee. Um, and then I end up a little bit against that leap. All, all I can do is replay um, a 50, 52 degrees. So I kind of try to get back to, uh, to the fairway, put my ball back in play, and uh, I miss that. Um, it happens. I, I don't know actually if my ball just hit the lip and came left, or it's just a bad shot. Uh, anyway, it's, it's done. Um, and then we, we, we see Nikolai hit, hitting the greens, and uh, my caddy was like, okay, we should probably lay up and get ourselves a wedge and, uh, and kind of try to, um, to make par and uh, get a, let's say, a playoff or something. And um, I was like, listen, Woody, like, the, the light doesn't look too bad. Uh, I feel like I can do it. And he said, okay, but it's your call. <laughs> <laughs> it's all... It, I, it's my call, and I was so pumped at that time. I know I had the energy to, to lift that ball up on the green, mm -hmm. and uh, I kind of kind of aimed to the middle of the green, knowing the face would close a little bit because it's quite deep and thick. And uh, that ball came out like a bur butterfly, and uh, it really uh, it really feed uh, the slope on the green and left myself a nine uh, a nine footer or something, mm -hmm. and. Uh, that was the right time to, to prove that I had uh, the, the guts to finish that tournament, and uh, I did it, so I'm, I'm so happy about that last hole. Perfect. All right, we'll take some questions and raise your hand. We'll get you a mic, and we'll start with Todd and then Paul. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you talked outside about um, looking at written things that you have. I mean, you have the, the tattoo, yeah. but you also have other things that you were using to kind of calm yourself on the back. No, it's, uh, it's all about motivations. Uh, for me, it's really important to have uh, everything clear in my mind. Um, I uh, always wrote down, uh, to be fair, since I went in Spain last year, I, I write down some notes in my book, uh, which bring me back to the present moment. Uh, you know how it is on the golf course sometimes, uh, your head uh, flies away a little bit and you have to, to get back to the present moment to refocus yourself and uh, those sentences are like, um, they are telling me why I play golf, uh, why I'm here. Um, they, they show me, they, they give me a little extra confidence. Um, I think it's, uh, it's really key in all sports. Uh, the more confidence you get, the, the easiest it could be. And um, those sentences are, are there for. How important were they today in the mix of what you were trying to do? Yeah, big. Like, People won't realize, but those sentences I read them like a hundred times on only like six holes, and I, I'm, I'm like, just fucking focus on this, and then I raise up my head, and it's me to play, and uh, okay, now it's time to, it's 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 just show time, you know, and uh, you try to to commit to the shot, very focused, and uh, a good brief, and uh, and just try you uh, trying to do your best. That's all you can do, really. Can we hand that mic to Paul in front. Thank you. You mentioned it was a dream to come to America. How motivated over the last six, 12 months when this pathway from the DP World Tour here were you to, to get to the PGA Tour? 
The thing is, uh, to be fair, that wasn't, um, that wasn't my goal in 2023. Uh, I had no win since there. Uh, I spent seven years uh, battling on the DP World Tour to try get my, trying to get my first win, and uh, I hasn't achieved that so far. And then all of the sudden, uh, on the perfect timing, I have to say, it comes in Spain. Uh, wire to wire, uh, it proved me that I could, I, I'm capable to do great things. My confidence level went up, um, really shown also that with my staff we were doing the right things to be competitive on a high level of sport. Um, and then birdie the last four in Dubai to get myself into the PJ Tour and since then I'm like on the, on the cloud, I'm, I'm flying, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's incredible. After I just came here in America, just trying to enjoy every moment. Uh, it's a dream since I am 16, since I, I came to America for the first time to practice um, in West Palm. I, I loved everything about America, the mentality, the sports, um, everything you guys do. Uh, it feels like uh, I'm uh, half American somehow, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I had, I had almost no pressure coming playing in America. I was like, it's just an opportunity. If I fail, I could just go back in Europe and I start again. So it was just like trying to do your best every day, enjoy every moment because they are special ones. I can tell you, they are very special ones, and uh, it looked like it, it worked. And what? You said was when you were 16. Was that the first time you came to America, and why? Why specifically? Did you yeah, come? sorry, not 16. I was I was 17. 17. Yeah. So I, I finished high school, and I was reading between like should I go should I go to college in America or should I just practice and turn pro as soon as I can? Because uh, <laughs> my best world ranking as an amateur was probably 800 in the world at that time. Uh, I never been a, a very good player before I turned pro. To be fair. Um, but yeah, I came here to practice uh, in West Palm. I found some great people over there. My coach at that time was Ken Martin. Ken Martin, he caddied for Sandy Lyle. Uh, I had some lovely people in Royal Palm, as I said. And uh, when I came here and started to play the those minor league tour as an amateur, I was like, wow, that's that's a dream. The the the, the golf course, the the way the people are, everything, everybody was just cheering for me and I loved it and uh, since that moment I was just I felt like I had to to come back and then last one um, you now with this win world ranking wise you're projected in for the Olympics for France what yeah. would it mean to be able to play in an Olympics back home and all that that would involve yeah that's big um, Olympic is huge. Uh, since I'm kids, I'm watching it. Uh, we got lucky that he, when he came back to, I mean, golf came back into Olympics in, uh, what, what was that, 16 in Rio or something like this. Uh, I have a good friend of mine, Julian Ken. He was my mentor and he's still my mentor, to be fair. Um, he did that Olympics in Rio and told me how cool was it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely what it was one of my goals this year to qualify and represent my country in Paris, and uh, looks like I'm on a pretty good ship right now. <laughs>